to another episode of the Closure Pills, a screencast dedicated to the functions in the Closure standard library. Um, we've seen FNIL in the first episode. Uh, we are going to see K's, uh, one of the pos possible uh, conditional expressions and enclosure in this episode. Um, but before, a couple of anna quick announcements, really. Um, if you enjoy the content of this screencast, you might very well enjoy the content of the book I'm writing. is an early access program by Manning and is a book exactly dedicated to the Closure Standard Library. Um, the content of this screencast is based on the content of the book. I'm making uh, a little bit of summary because the examples in the book are much more extended. Um, and that was also that is the the website where you can find a book and my Twitter handle is at reborg. Um, another thing is valid until tomorrow, fifty percent off um, the price of the book. Um, so today is uh, the twenty fourth of January two thousand seventeen. You have time until uh, tomorrow, I think, at midnight. Um, to uh, if you use this code at checkout, you'll get a fifty percent off the book. Um, very final thing, uh, this, uh, the case function is one of the sample functions available as a free downloads from the book homepage. So in this case, you, you can go there, download uh, the PDF and have a look at how it looks like when it's not a screencast, but is in the book. And um, I'll be uploading a new version soon because in the process of making this screencast, I'm also making improvement or what I hope are improvement to uh, things I have already written in the book. And it is the case for case. And let's get it started. So case is one, as I said, is one of the uh, conditional expressions available in Clojure, the other being cond and cond p. Um, case is uh, th the main design for case, the main purpose for case is speed. So it is the fastest of the three. and It's also the maybe lower level, uh, but it also offers some interesting uh, features that we are going to show today. Uh, but first of all, like a very simple example, just to show how case works so um, we go on a, on a case uh, passing some input in this case the number one and then we list a few pairs of uh, test expressions and then expressions so um, if it is a zero then return zero if it is a one then return the string one and so on and you can also pass some default, sorry, some default at the end. Uh, in this case, it evaluates to the second uh, branch expression, uh, the one in the middle. Maybe one of the interesting, the most interesting uh, thing about case is that those test expression, in this case, zero, one, and default. Um, Nowhere default is not a test, a test expression; it's a then expression. But zero and one and others, if you put them, are treated as constant literals. What that means is that uh, at macro expansion time, indeed, case is a macro; it's not a function. But a macro expansion time, what is there in the test expression is taken as a literal form; it's not evaluated, and that has some interesting side effects or you can consider it a feature as well. And uh, we'll see why in a second. So uh, consider, for example, this. So case, uh, again, we can take one. And then as expression, we are using uh, this form, inc zero. And in this case, we return, uh, well, one. And decrement one and we'll return zero, and then a default again. You might uh, be surprised to see this result. So the number one is going to be matched against inc zero and dec one, 
and is taking the second branch, the deck one branch. Although you might, uh, you might, although you might think that he's going to evaluate to those expression, case is not. Those are literals, meaning what case is doing is treating uh, function invocations like these ones in a special way. Um, they are more similar to set, um, like a data structure set, than anything else. Meaning that if the number one is included uh, in between the symbol inc and the number zero, then that is the branch that is taken. If instead is part of the set symbol decrement, and when I say symbol decrement, I mean this, um, then is taking the second branch and so on. In this case, one is part of the set composed by the symbol deck and the number one. Uh, which is the second branch, and that is what is evaluated. Um, that can be used uh, for interesting features. It can also give you some surprises because it's taken as an expression, as a constant literal, and surprises like uh, the following. So another sample could be: let's say we want to see to translate symbols into. Uh, letters for example uh, Greek letters so we, we have pi and we have uh, alpha and we want to mutate that well maybe into the letter A um, we have beta and we want to mutate that into a B and finally we have pi and we want to mutate that into a pi or something like that so if we try that we get this duplicate case test constant quote and it's not easy to understand what's going on and where so yes we see that there is a quote and it's used for the symbol but when we do at the REPL something like symbol uh, sorry quota quote beta we get the symbol beta right type beta and it is evaluated as a closure lang symbol so what's going on there? Um, so, as I said, at macro expansion time, those are treated, the tests are treated as constant literals, meaning Ks looks at those as they were already quoted. Uh, but we are quoting them again for Ks, and so what Ks is, is like basically the double quoted alpha, because that is what is the way it is evaluated inside the case. And if you try to do that at the REPL, uh, quoting a quoted symbol, you get uh, the expansion of the quoting instead of the symbol, which is indeed quote alpha. So what's going on there, if we were to translate that as case sees it, um, it is something like this, quote, alpha, a, quote, beta, b, and so on, quote, pi, pi. And if we do this again, we get ex the, the ex exactly the same exception again. So what we really want to do in that case is just remove the quotes, uh, which is even easier. And this is apparently not valid closure, but it is in the context of a case. And this is what we want. So as I said, we can use that. We can use, so we, we need to pay some special care when we use things like symbols, um, or other like um, uh, collection literals to avoid uh, any kind of this kind of expansion to get in the way uh, but we can also use this as, as, a, as a proper feature when we want to match against uh, a group of things and we don't need to do any like into set uh, evaluation to see if an element is part of a set as we would probably do uh, outside a case and that can be used, for example, in this simple 
uh, calculator function uh, where we get an operand and we want to translate this operand into something that we can really use so we can use the case onto the operand and then we list the things that can be translated to an operand so for example a plus uh, becomes the plus operation uh, a minus as a string or extended like that becomes the minus operation and so on so we'll have star times as times and maybe like divided by as divided by and we can also add like uh, uh, constantly um, constantly constantly something that is just returning a string that is telling us uh, a known operand of things like that a known operand uh, with whatever amount of um, arguments is invoked so we can use our calculator like this calculator uh, I don't know plus like that as a string and then we apply to two and five and we get seven and so on you get the idea of how it works and if I don't have that Oh, sorry, no, that, that was meant to be unknown. Sorry for the typo. Unknown and not operand, but operator. But you got idea, the idea, the idea, I hope. Um, uh, so that is invoking the, uh, the default option. And you could use something like this um, for like uh, several cases where you have user input, for example, from from the keyboard you want to translate uh, that string into something that you can do something about um, as I said um, as alternatives to uh, case you can uh, use cond or cond p um, there are a few differences I think the main one is the fact that the the constant the, sorry, the test expressions are not taken as constant literals. So if you use something like uh, ink one in a cond or a cond cond p, uh, you say equals one something that is increment zero, and you print one, that is going to evaluate increment of zero and returning the one branch. Um, so that is definitely the main uh, the main difference cond con p also supports um, uh, a funky operator um, double greater than uh, in in the uh, then expressions so it's got a few different things um, I would say that uh, in normal conditions you uh, can definitely go for cond or con p uh, if you are specifically in searching for searching for speed, probably case is your uh, best option. Or if you uh, if you need this grouping of constants, uh, it's also a very good option without using any set. Um, to verify uh, the claim that um, a case is fast, uh, let's have a look at some benchmark. So. I'll import criterium library referring quick bench that should be good enough to see some uh, interesting result and uh, let's compare for example case and con p so we'll have some constant and we'll do quick, quick quick benchmark of cond p where it is equal five and any of this would do and it might take a few seconds to return the answer and the meanwhile so 
we can talk a little bit about the implementation details of case so case is quite sophisticated um, what it's doing for you is translating the case uh, statement into basically what boils down to the JVM uh, switch statement that is called oh no, I don't remember the name I'm searching it in my notes um, where is it? Oh, it's not important, but oh, table switch. Um, it's called uh, table switch, and it's a specific operand in the bytecode uh, to implement this kind of uh, switch statements. And case is using the same technique that is used in compilers optimizations when uh, switch statement switch statements are implemented, and uh, the, the technique is basically trying to transform uh, a sequence of nested conditions into uh, a constant access to an hash table. How can you do that? Well, if you can transform the test expressions into something that can be used as a key into a hash table, then you can um, arrange those keys into the hash table so that uh, in order to enter one of those conditions, you just need a constant access. You just in, you, you just need to access the right key, and and this is what case is doing for for you. Um, it's uh, taking your test expressions that sometimes are not trivially integers and is transforming them into hash numbers, and then is using those numbers to uh, implement the switch statement in the, in the JVM. There are a few constraints to implement that in bytecode and uh, case is taking care of those and one of those is that uh, the keys that are used uh, for hashing needs to be contiguous uh, meaning that they, they, um, you, you don't want any gaps between the keys and uh, in order to do that uh, is doing Closure is doing um, shift masking uh, to make them contiguous as well, and is taking care of clashes and things like that. So it's quite sophisticated. But at the end, what you obtain is uh, a constant time access to access the test conditions. So uh, let's have a look if that is working and how it is working with this very fast example. So we are just replacing the cond p with a case, case on 5, and then we have the same conditions and we try again. Um, one of the main things that is going to change between the cond p and case in this case is that uh, by passing the last of the uh, test expression that is matching, the number 5, we are forcing cond or cond p to go uh, linearly down the list of all the test expression to find out which one is matching. We are not short circuit and the first one and we're doing that op on purpose of course. Um, but the more test expressions you have the more this gap will be bigger. And in this case we are like about 10 times faster. We are going from about 70 nanoseconds to about six and a half nanoseconds. So it's ten times faster, more or less. Um, all right, I think uh, I gave you a good overview of what case can do for uh, for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed the podcast, uh, sorry, the, the screencast, and um, I hope you uh, follow the YouTube channel, and uh, I'll see you, or I'll talk to you the next time in about a week. Uh, thank you for listening. Goodbye.